enforce it on children, by aerosol, things like that. He asked about the vaccines and how much pressure sometimes force is used for people taking vaccines. And there are dangers in taking vaccines. There's also many blessings with vaccines. When I was in high school, friends and neighbors got polio and they died. And that vaccine has been fantastic. Smallpox, the same way. But I think we've gone way overboard. And I think Persian Gulf War syndrome was related to vaccines and other things and chemicals and depleted uranium. But, you know, and I have, you know, three of our kids are in medicine and they have kids. And they have to be concerned about giving these vaccines. I think the doctors have gotten to the point where they give too many too often. They bunch them together, four or five of these vaccines together, they overwhelm the immune system. You know, in a free society, it would be assumed that the individual makes up their own mind. You know, and that shouldn't be a condition of going anywhere or any place. I mean, if you didn't take the vaccine for polio, you're not a danger to me. You know, it's that you're endangering yourself. So I don't like the idea of the use of force. And I think we've gone way overboard. And there's a lot of people who have suffered severe consequences from overdoing these immunizations. I'll go back here. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on out of that happy subject. And let's kind of move on to polio because, you know, we kind of showed that maybe it really wasn't the smallpox vaccine that eradicated smallpox. It was going away anyways. We, ha we got uh, education and potable water. We only had a small percentage of the whole world population that was even vaccinated with smallpox to begin with. So we can see that there were some other things that came into mind. So what about, what about polio? Because that's the other thing that everybody talks about. Now, because what's the first thing that people think about when they hear the word polio? I mean, the words that come to mind. Paralysis, iron lung, kids, right? We've been so indoctrinated with that that we think those words are synonyms, like we think vaccination and immunization are synonyms. They're not. You know, polio is not a synonym for paralysis, and I'm going to show you why is that more than 90% 90, 90 of people who get exposed to the polio virus, it's a simple infection. In fact, it's so simple it looks like gastroenteritis and nobody even knows that they have it. Okay, they get headaches, sore throat, vomiting. It kind of goes on for a couple days. What's that sound like? The flu, right? A little gastroenteritis, a little bit of a flu. You get over the flu in about 72 hours, you have lifetime immunity. So that, it, so that more than 90% of the people, when polio was still rather endemic in our society in the 40s and the 50s and maybe even the 60s, um, that's what happened to the vast majority of people. About 5% developed something called abort, that they call abortive poliomyelitis, which, by the way, all this information about polio comes out of the Merck Manual. So the Merck Manual is a medical doctor's reference textbook that has all of this information and all of these statistics. Um, it, they, about 5% of the people get something called abortive polio, which is sort of sore throat and maybe indistinctive of any other viral illness, but they, they, it may not be so, so uh, profound. And then about 3% get something called non-paralytic polio. It happens about 14 days after viral illness, and for all intents and purposes, it looks kind of like viral meningitis. And viral meningitis can cause some limb weakness on either the arms or the legs. Because depending on what part of the brain is irritated by the meningitis, if it happens to be over and in an area of the brain that controls a particular limb, you can get some paresthesias and some numbness and a little bit of weakness that's kind of going on. That's what hyperesthesia and paresthesia means. Hyperesthesia means that you touch it and it's oversensitive. The um, paresthesia means it just feels weird and you've got sort of nummy things going on. Symptoms last up to 10 days, followed by complete recovery and lifelong immunity. Life, life, uh, complete recovery. That's an important point. Now, less than 2% of people who ever got exposed to the polio virus end up with paralysis. And there's three different kinds of paralysis. One is called spinal paralysis. That's the most common, and that's the one that we're most familiar with. That's the people who maybe have some re residual limb weakness, arm weakness, arm legs paralysis. Um, and the ball bar is the type that people uh, know about in terms of um, the iron lung machine. That means it affected your brain stem and you had problems breathing. Now think about those numbers. That's 2% of this 2%. So that's 0.04% 
of all people who ever came exposed to the virus had this type of uh, this type of problem. So that brings the numbers down even smaller because not everybody got exposed to the virus. Then the aftermath of that type of infection, the aftermath, 50% of all of these people had complete recovery. Uh, uh, what the other 50% had some functional losses that continued to prove over a couple of years, and the amount of paralysis that was present at about 12 months was usually considered to be permanent. So if you take like a bird's eye stand back look at the, popula the population as a whole and the number of people that may have been exposed to this, the numbers start coming down and get smaller and smaller. Regarding the conspiracy theory behind 9-11, I know that you do not believe that there was a conspiracy theory. However, you know this guy sort of uh, supports that idea. So then why would you associate yourself with, with this kind of guy, considering well, your reputation as a presidential hopeful? But just think of what it would be like if I could only go on the TV stations, the major TV networks, when I knew they agreed with me on all of it. All the major networks agreed with the war. That meant I could never be on any major TV network. Of course I don't support everything he says. But people that I associate with, I don't endorse their views. They come and associate with me to endorse my views, or I'm just expressing my views. But there'd be no way I could be on t television if I had, if that was the litmus test, that I had to agree with everything that they stood for and what they promoted. It just wouldn't work. All right, let's go on to... Many of your supporters call themselves 9-11 truthers. They believe that the U.S. government was in some way complicit with the 9-11 attacks or covered it up. Are you tonight prepared to either embrace that rhetoric or ask those supporters to abandon it or divorce themselves from your candidacy? Well, I can't tell people what to do, but I've abandoned those viewpoints. I don't believe that, and that's all. I've abandoned those viewpoints. I don't believe that, and that's all. That's the only thing that is important. That's all. That's the only thing that is important. Mama's over, gonna see you better scatter when you see the baseball. 
Somebody is very deliberately making us sick. Now, why would somebody deliberately want to put stuff into your body that should not be there? It's like being in war. You don't want to get shot. And this is a war, just in case anybody didn't catch it. This is a war, and it is a war we cannot afford to lose. Do I know exactly who the people are? No, I don't know exactly. What I do know is that if you read the dots, they all read the depopulation. I'm disgusted by it. I spent 32 years of my life defending all of our rights, all of our freedoms, all of them. And here we are, and people are making choices for me where I do not have those same freedoms that I used to have. The Georgia Guidestones, for those who don't know, are an enormous, almost 20-foot-tall granite monument in this small little town, Elberton, Georgia. The first commandment on the stones was to maintain world population at 500 million, and other commandments speak of creating a world court uh, advising humans not to be a cancer on the earth and they are in a sense the globalist Illuminati's Ten Commandments and we know that uh, population reduction has been a key issue and goal uh, of the Illuminati for some time now and only those in the know uh, only those enlightened and in on the secret are able to decipher the meanings of their monuments and of their symbols and this is one more open Illuminati symbol that stands in a fantastic beautiful field out where the public can go and view it uh, and here we have a monument calling for the population reduction of over 95 uh, percent of the population I, I find it fascinating yet disturbing and disgusting this is, chills me this is a press release August 05 on August 30th and 31st more than 750,000 vaccinators will go house to house and work at vaccination booths across Indonesia to reach more than 24 million children under the age of five in one day. In one day. Now, don't you think it's more cost effective to use about maybe 10,000 vaccinators and take three months than gain experience? What's the hurry? This was a trial, in my interpretation, this is a trial run in order to vaccinate a lot of people so if and when something goes wrong in the vaccine, Nobody will refuse it. They've already taken it. So it takes a little time for these rumors to spread about abortions, uh, ovulation problems, paralysis, so forth. So they have a trial run now to vaccinate a huge, huge number of people in one day. And I believe it's possible that this infrastructure that's being built in this country with the flu vaccine, this pandemic that's going to come, they're trying to build the infrastructure to do mass vaccinations in a very, very short period of time. Um, last section here, and this is mind-boggling. Now, the HCG vaccines were, what, 20 years ago or so. It's been a little while. What's new? You wouldn't believe it. Uh, recombinant DNA techniques. Uh, and there's just so much research. And I, I'm not, you know, this is like dusting off my basic science. I mean, I had to... I had a heck of a week. I was in the library and the you know, first year medical students and pushing them out of the rows to get to some of these books. Targeting vaccinia virus express secretory beta subunit. What they do is they know that if you take naked DNA and inject it into mammalian tissue, you can express. It'll, it'll function. DNA is what, how proteins in your body are created. So you have two options on an anti-fertility front. If you put HCG, the DNA sequence for HCG into a, a, a virus, inject it, what that can do is create an HCG forever. And if it's foreign enough, then you'll get antibodies for it. Now, they've always had trouble getting HCG to be recognized by the body. So the other way they do it is, is put, instead of the sequence that makes HCG hormone, they make the sequence that makes the HCG antibody. It's passive immunization. So when the body reads the DNA and creates this along with whatever proteins in the cell, it will make the antibodies immediately. 
indefinitely. So it's basically through DNA technique, it's a stealth way. I mean, you won't be able to figure this out. A lab, it would be a sophisticated lab to discover this. And they've done this, for example, in this study, vaccinia, which is the smallpox. So you can put this in a smallpox vaccine. I don't know how you discover it. Um, it's even done in plants. They've done this in tobacco plants. They've put this DNA sequences into plants, and it expresses anti-HCG antibodies. What's the U.S. policy? Do the U.S. have a policy on population control? And this is where our story gets really, really strange. Because this may be the most notorious document in the history of the United States. And I'll show you why. It's the National Security Study Memorandum 200. Uh, Kissinger Report, who was the director of the NSC and Secretary of State, submitted this document to Nixon in 74. They identified target nations they were going to use. They wanted to enlist multinational organizations. Legalized abortion was key. Financial incentives, propaganda, and even coercion were to be used. The methods of NSSM, they wanted it to be inexpensive and safe. They wanted it to be perceived as safe, for sure. Uh, Non-physician, which means they wanted to implement this to huge populations and not enough doctors to do it. And vaccines are perfect for that. You don't have to be a physician in these countries to vaccinate. But this thing just jumped off the page. Injectable contraceptives for women, which are effective for three months or more, didn't exist back then. It sounds like a vaccine, potentially. So I would like to give you what I believe is the real agenda. And so much of what Dr. Ayub told you in the previous talk carries over into this one. There are people who have a different world view. NSSM 200. And what they say is we've got to restrict population throughout the rest of the world. First of all, in, our, in the developed countries, and then, of course, in the underdeveloped countries. And that's why we give all of these uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars every year to the United Nations of planning, the Family Planning Association, uh, why we finance abortion in China, why we finance abortion throughout the rest of the world, why we put those contraceptive vaccines out. And I've talked to people from Kenya and from the Philippines, both where they Without knowledge of women, they've given them contraceptive vaccines so they can't conceive and taken away the most important thing a woman can have, the ability to have children. But you see, these evil and wicked people have no human compassion. They just have a goal, and that is sustainable development. <laughs> ว่าสิตอนแน่เจเนเลซากุนยาลิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูนิออลูน
Expanding humanity is squeezing wildlife populations into islands of habitat worldwide. Continued wildlife reproduction in these fixed size areas means eventual habitat decimation. We are applying immunocontraception to limit population overgrowth in some wildlife species until humans can hopefully control their own numbers. This video shows how animals are marked, treated with contraceptive vaccine, and monitored from a helicopter. Is this okay, man?